My honor and pleasure to be here with Rabbi Dr. Herbert Cohen, who lives in Beit Shemesh, Israel, receives smicha from YU and uh, his doctorate in English literature, and has worked in, in synagogues and high school, uh, as a high school principal, and has written a bunch of great books, author of Kosher Parenting, Walking in Two Worlds, Visioning Torah Concepts Through Secular Studies, and Kosher Movies. A film critic discovers more life lessons at the cinema, which is our topic today. So thanks for taking time to talk. Happy to be here. <laughs> so um, how did you get involved in this idea of kosher movies? Uh, the truth is, uh, I didn't have a traditional uh, day school education. I came to it late. Uh, at Yeshiva University, they had a program called a Jewish Studies Program for students who had no day school background. I enrolled. My mind was expanded. I got excited about my Torah studies, and I began to really pursue them very uh, you know, aggressively. Uh, at the same time, I was an English major, and I always uh, wanted to sort of bridge the, the gap between my secular and sacred studies, and it didn't really happen until I finished college, and I saw, I was able to hear a lecture given by Rabbi Joseph Soloveitchik, and it was the first time that I went to a talk which lasted for three hours, but which seemed like 15 minutes. <laughs> it was mind-boggling, yeah. a watershed moment. Why was I impressed? Because he was a person who was, uh, uh, had a reputation for deep, serious Torah learning, depth and breadth. At the same time, he quoted Dostoevsky, he quoted Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. I never saw that before in my life. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a powerful uh, experience for me. Mm -hmm. Later on at Yeshiva, when I continued my Jewish studies, uh, uh, Jewish studies I was also blessed to be in the Talmud class of Rabbi Aaron Lichtenstein, who was the son-in-law of Rabbi Soloveitchik. He has a PhD in English from Harvard. So also I was able to continue sort of seeing the world in a multifaceted way because of the influence of Rabbi Soloveitchik and also Rabbi Lichtenstein. When I came to Atlanta to serve as the assistant rabbi to Rabbi Emanuel Feldman, uh, I also um, continued my studies in English at Georgia State University, uh, and I began to teach in the high school British literature, American literature, because I had my, my I, about that time I had a master's in, in that uh, subject. So I was teaching. And I found that when I taught my students, they responded much more positively to a poem than they did to a particular verse in the Bible mm -hmm. or a verse in the Talmud. Yeah. It, it, th that was somewhat, somewhat not as relevant to them as a poem by Wordsworth. Or, yeah. of, course, of course, they were being tested in their English studies in a way that for them was very serious because it meant. If I do well in English, I'm going to do well in college. So there was a heavier stake on the part of our student population to study uh, poetry, study English, to be well-versed. As I became more and more involved in this, I saw that literature was a way to get close to the students and to influence them hmm. religiously. So I, that's why I wrote this book, Walking Into Worlds, yeah. how you vision, you know, Torah studies through secular uh, learning. At the end of the day, I realized more people see movies than read books. And I could really accomplish more <laughs> in terms of... Point, my, Americans read 0.6 books a, day, uh, a year in America. 0.6. <laughs> films, I don't know the number. It's got to be dozens, right? Well, dozens, yeah. yeah. But at that point, uh, you know, I saw films as a way really to connect with kids in a way that is relevant for them. I always enjoyed movies since I, I've been a kid. Uh, so I began writing film reviews. Uh, and uh, I found that uh, they connected me uh, to a great extent with students. I also happened to go through the 1960s when films were really changing radically. Uh, you know, the, the traditional Western, for example, the good guy was in white, the, the bad guy was dressed in black, and that's the way movies were high noon, a, a typical yeah. example. Then I saw Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. I don't know if you all remember that film. What is this, Robert Redford and Paul Newman? And all of a sudden, the bad guys were the good guys. It was a very complicated time, explosive time, from the point of view of movie themes and movie conceptions of heroes. So it, it just it really, truly, intellectually and emotionally engaged me. I was excited about it. Yeah. So then I began, I began to convey that excitement through writing about movies. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, it's kosher movies. This is volume two. I have yeah. volume one. But uh, it's not here. Very nice. So what's the hermeneutic? What's the interpretive lens you bring to a film? When you're watching a film and say, I want to see how I can grow from this. Yes. It's personal. It's not just turn off my mind and eat some popcorn. I actually want to be engaged with this in a personal way. What's the, what's the interpretive lens you bring as a Jew to this film? Okay. So as I say, the 60s were a time when movies yeah. were off the wall, you know. Right. Uh, so... <laughs> 
I, I should, they were on the wall. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But, but let's say I began to feel the more the more influenced I was by my Torah studies, that movies were problematic mm -hmm. because the movies were changing. It was conventional, you know, good versus bad, complicated. Think of the Batman trilogy; it's complicated. Right. Even the good guy is confused. Yeah, yeah. It's very hard. So I uh, saw, as I was growing up that I wanted to see movies that not simply were entertaining, because they have to be entertaining, but also movies that had something positive to say. I wanted to feel, you know, good after the film. Here's an example. I grew up at Mount Vernon, two high schools, Davis High School, Edison High School. Davis High School, basically for white kids, they go to college. Edison High School, basically for black kids, they go into the trades. And at that point, when I was growing up, civil rights were, was a big deal, and they were, they were trying to merge the two high schools into one Mount Vernon High School. So I was involved as a teenager with the whole issue of black and white relations. Then I saw a film called The Defiant Ones with Tony Curtis and Sidney Poitier. What's, what's the, uh, the, the, the essential plot? These are two prisoners. They're being transported by train to a certain location. The train crashes. The two prisoners escape. One problem. They're chained to one another. They gotta learn to live with one another. Oh. <laughs> they can't get out. I, I know. I, we don't have enough time. I explain to you some particular scenes that really yeah. graphically demonstrate that these people really can't stand one another, and yet they find they have to somehow live with one another. If you see that film, and as I saw it as a young person, I could watch it over and over again because mm -hmm. not only was the film exciting, Sidney Poitier and Tony Curtis. But the film had a really profound message that we have to learn how to get along with mm -hmm. one another, yeah. even if we don't agree with one right. another. Right. We have to right. learn how to live with one another. Beautiful. Yeah. So, so um, maybe you can share an example of how you were, a time when you were personally transformed. In your own avodas Hashem, your service yeah. of God, or your own just character, character traits, or your perspective on the world from a moment in a film. Look, I'll give you, uh, I can do it, uh, there's a lot of films I can talk about. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think. Of, you want an old movie or, or anything? Or current? A moment that feels like a big moment for you, yeah. Okay, the film called Changing Lanes mm -hmm. with Ben Affleck and Stable mm -hmm. Jackson. Mm -hmm. It's a simple movie on one level. These two guys get into a crash on the FDR Drive. If you're not from New York, it means yeah. it's on the east side of New York. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's a very busy thoroughfare. Ben Affleck is a lawyer. He has to get to the court to make his presentation. It's critically important. Um, Samuel Jackson has to get to a court proceeding in which he is going to be, uh, it's going to be determined whether he has custody of his children. They both need to be there on time. They crash on the highway. Ben Affleck says, I'll pay you, whatever it is, I gotta go, I can't stay and fill out a report. The other guy says, I need to have a report, otherwise, I, I, mean, I, I, I well, who knows, when I'm going to see you again. Yeah. There is a, a failure to communicate, like in Cool Hand Luke, what we have is a failure to communicate. They both get angry with one another because Ben Affleck realizes later that an important piece of paper that has to be presented to court, he left at the scene of the accident. Yeah. And he has to get in touch with this guy who by this time can't stand him because mm -hmm. he made him lose custody mm -hmm. of his children because mm -hmm. he showed up late to the court proceeding. Yeah. Yeah. So there's anger. The anger leads to, to the most killing one another. So I'll give, you a, I'll give you a spoiler. Mm -hmm. The story ends happily. But when I saw the film, I thought this was a great kosher movie. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it shows you how bad mm -hmm. anger could be. And it made me rethink, sometimes, what am I getting upset about? Mm -hmm. What are the stakes here? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I think it helped me yeah. deal with, I'm not an angry person, but mm -hmm. it helped me mm -hmm. understand mm -hmm. the consequences of needless anger. Yeah. So. Very interesting. So, you know, so to play devil's advocate, someone might say, uh, Musser and films, how could this possibly go together? Musser, the holy tradition of working on our character traits, you know, to be like God, halach to yeah. You know, in films, it's, ugh, it's violence, it's sex, yeah. it's cursing, it's all, yeah. it's all craziness, you know, I mean, so, um, uh, so how do you, how do you bring these two together? I mean, and how do you expect, someone who doesn't have a Musar background, how can they cultivate the ability to, find those gems and, and not just be entertainment, but be a chance for growth. Like, okay. How does how somebody do that? Okay, the truth is it's very difficult. Yeah, yeah. I will say, generally, yeah. movies today are corrupting. They're yeah. very bad. Yeah. Yeah. But I was reared as a young kid with movies that were part of my life. I would yeah. go to synagogue in the morning, go to movies in the afternoon, right. Right. and I can't shake the habit. I, I just yeah. am a movie goer. Yeah. It's part of who I am. 
So I would say to you that Musa really means ethical instruction. I can learn to be a better person if I watch the right movies. And uh, that's really the focus of my books. Uh, interesting. In yeah. other words, you have to be able to discriminate between mm -hmm. the wheat and the chaff, just like in literature. Right, right. You know, there's some good novels that are good and worthwhile and some right. are trash. Right, so right. So you have to develop, Rabbi Lichtenstein said, said, said that in class, you know, what did you learn at Harvard, the most important thing you learned at Harvard? I learned the complexity of human experience. Mm -hmm. It's not black and white. Mm -hmm. Gray mm -hmm. is the ordinary texture of human experience. Mm -hmm. So... It's not simple, because yeah. a lot of stuff is very bad, right. and, but if you have my book, you'll be helpful. Great. Okay. I, and the truth is, yeah. my book is not for kids, because yeah. I do deal with uh, films that have all ratings, violence, right, that's right. a lot that's of profanity. Right. Yeah. Right. You're going to see that. So right. if you're not into that, I tell my children Great. who are very different, yeah. I, I, I don't tell them to go to movies, but yeah. if they go to the movies, this is what you should yeah. see. <laughs> okay. okay, last two questions. Uh, one is, what are the three Mido you think um, can be most accessible in this experience? The three character traits that you think people might start with, um, you know, cultivating in, in, in watching some of these? Well, controlling anger. Okay. Because a lot of things deal with right. anger out of control. Yep. Great. Another important me that is being sensitive to the needs of the other. Yeah, good. That's very important. And it's yeah. a common Chesed, thing. said empathy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really, get, get inside the yeah. other guys. Right. As Zig Ziglar used to say, you have to both see things from the same side of the table. Yeah. You got to see that. That's, those are two right. important things. Right. And um, um, another thing, um, well, there's so many things to learn. <laughs> I mean, really, there is. Um, Maybe that's part of it. Yeah. Also, you know, when you see somebody else suffering, yeah. you know, don't stand idly by. Right. right. Step in, do something. Yeah. Right. Be Beautiful. helpful. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff. Okay, last question then. So what, um, what is one... Oh, man, yeah, please, one, yes, one please, yeah. And uh, one thing that's common is that yeah. fail, is to understand that failure is not terminal. Mm, mm. You could fail, it's okay. Right. Yeah. You'll, you'll get a, up again. That's a consistent theme. Yeah. For example, Great. the Martian. Yeah. The guy, everything goes wrong. Mm. But he stays with it. Right, very nice. <laughs> he builds a garden on Mars. <laughs> so, um, last question. What is one film that you think is just exploding with values that you think you'd have to be asleep to not be affected by the positive values in the film? Is there is there something like yeah. that? Yeah. I think, yeah, I would say the, the, the best film that I like that does that is Chariots of Fire. Mm. Uh, at the time when I saw it, I was busy running five days a week. <laughs> so, Very nice. That film has, I, I don't want to go into it with the whole yeah. story. You should but, you so. continue to be Matzlia. Really, <laughs> kosher movies, check out some of these great books coming out. Thank we're going to put a podcast up with a larger sheer, and we're going to put a clip also, a clip uh, about your great work. Thank you. Thank you so much.